Hey guys, this is Karan here. I live in Saudi Arabia, studying 10th grade in Yangu International School. In this section, what we will do is talk about multiple, multiple angle and product of double angle. Okay, form. Uh, we can solve this by trigonometry, and here are some formulas that we can use to solve them. Okay, now here's just the formula. I wrote them down before starting this video. So here's the formula. Now what I will do is erase this formula and. So, uh, start taking some examples and start using them in order to find the angle okay so let's go ahead and raise it okay so let's say you have a value of x which is which lies between this constraint okay now what we need to do is find zeros of Let's say a function was given, h of x is equal to cosine of 2x minus cosine, cosine x. So to finding the zeros, we always say, okay, to find zeros, we make h of x, which is equal to y, to be equal to 0. Right? So let's go ahead and do that. So this over here would be replaced with 0. So 0 would be equal to cosine of 2x minus cosine of x. Right? Now, we can also, since this is 2, we can use the properties, the formulas that, we, that were shown before this. So there would be 0, 2 cosine of cosine squared x minus 1 minus cosine of x okay so now we have 0 would be equal to 2 cosine of cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 1 which basically equal out as bracket 2 cosine x plus 1 multiplied by cosine x minus 1 okay now what we can do is basically put this in another form that basically looks like this okay 2 cosine of x plus 1 which is equal to 0 2 cosine is equal to 1 we take this first equal this as 0 then we take this and equal this as 0 so what's the value of x over here when this is equal to 0 so let's go and find that by doing this so what we found out is cosine is equal to 1 over half right cosine x cosine x is equal to we put this over here so it would be negative right here so it's negative one half and when you do a co inverse of cosine of x we find out that x basically is equal to 60 degrees okay so that's the first thing that we found out x to be 60 degrees now let's go ahead and find out the second one now we replace this over here function with zero so let's go ahead and do that first found out that it's cosine of x minus 1 which is equal to 0 so cosine of x would be equal to 1 so if you do that it would be x would be equal to 0 so for another value would be 0 so when x is 60 or 0 this the whole equation would be 0 okay and we just found out the value of 0th function over here now since x lies between, it says, or equal to um, 0 and, and less than 2 pi, which is 360 degrees. So it's basically saying it, x could be 0, okay, x could be equal to 0 or greater than 0, okay, and it, but it has to be less than 360. And whatever answer we have is less than 360 and is equal, equal to 0. 
So there's two possible values that uh, x can take on in this equation that we took. Okay, so now what we are going to do is basically take another example on this, just like this, to get hang of it. Okay, h of t of sine 4t plus 2 sine 2t. Well, to find the zeros of this function, we need to make this equal to 0. So let's go ahead and do that. 0. Whoops. Is equal to sine. 4t plus 2 sine 2t, right? We just so instead of writing uh, 2t every single time, let's just put n. Let n be equal to 2t right here. So we basically would say uh, something like this. So 0 is equal to sine of 2n because it's 4t, so it's 2 times n, right? So plus the 2 sine of n. Okay, so don't mix that up, sine. Okay, it's 2 sine of n. Then it's equal, we can even put this as putting down 2 over here. 2 sine of n. 2 sine of cosine of n. By using the properties. Plus 2 sine n. Okay. Then we can do this 2 sine of n times the cosine of n plus 1. Okay? Now we can, after doing this, the whole real equation starts basically right here. Is that if you have this over here, it would basically turn out to be, let's see, this says cosine of n plus 1. So uh, cosine of this will be 0 times is equal to 2 sine 2t, two which we replace this as this over here, and this will be cosine of 2t plus 1. Okay, this is t, let me make t. Then do that, you recall the properties, we'll be factorizing this t cosine of t multiplied by 2 cosine squared t plus 1 okay and then you have oops let's figure out one mistake myself then basically after you do that, you would do 0 is equal to 2, 2 sine t cosine t times 2 cosine squared t. And if you multiply this, you would basically get 2 times 2, 4, 4, four to the 8. Okay, so it would be 0. 0 is equal to 8 sine t cosine t okay then we split each uh, term apart that says sine t would be equal to 0 and then we found out that it's t is equal to 0 when sine is 0 or we also find when sine is equal to pi it's equal to 0 which is 90 degrees if it's in radians, okay guys? So if it's, whoops, sine cubed because it's cosine, cosine multiplied together, okay? And then you have cosine cubed t be equal to zero. So what's the value that t can take on? The t can take on, let's see, the graph of cosine goes from up to the bo bottom and it goes at pi 2 and 3 pi 2. So it turns out that we just solved this equation, find the zeroth of this function, we just found 
the zeros of this function over here and it turned out that it's not really hard all you need to do is just pay some attention and this over here uh, this would be sometimes handy to make it uh, n is equal to 2t because then you don't have to deal with lots of processes going on the border here okay so I would recommend you one of the things right here that we just did now in this uh, we're going, what we'll do is basically go ahead and solve another example just like this okay in this problem it says tangent of u is equal to one half and then it says pi is you can take on value greater than pi but less than 3 pi over 2 which is 270 degrees pi can take on in in degree mode it basically says that uh, you can take on values greater than 90 but less than 270 okay so which basically if you try to graph this thing over here basically be looking like this Okay. You form a triangle and you have let's say negative one over here, negative two as an x over here, negative one y, then you have five radical five. Okay, so what's happening is that here we just form this over here. Now you can tell that this over here is tangent of u is equal to one half. Now since it says one half the slope, we found out the line of one half and we can conclude that the first thing that will happen here is the sine of two u, right? The formula, which basically can be written as sine of u cosine of u, cosine of u, right? So it's basically two sine of u, which is right here sine of u so it'd be negative one over five okay sine negative uh, opposite over hypotenuse so it'd be negative one over radical oops radical five okay and then cosine of u cosine is basically uh, adjacent over radical phi okay that would be 2 negative 2 whoops over radical phi and then you sort this out and basically uh, I had to do this in the calculator I haven't solved this yet but uh, the base is the same and basically be 4 over radical 25 right 5 times 5 radical 25 well, this cancels off and we have 4 over 5, it's the remainder. Okay, now since we already know this, let's go ahead and erase this part and go to the second part, which brings us as cosine of 2u, right? That's another thing. Well, cosine of 2u can also be written as 1 minus 2 sine squared u sine squared u 1 minus 2 times the sine squared u would be negative 1 radical 5 squared okay that's basically it it would turn out to be 1 minus 2 over 5 and it would give us 3 fifths because you want yeah you need to make the basis same and it would give you 3 over 5 right and then you all you need to do is come up with the solutions that basically looks like this along this line basically says that the tangent of 2u would be equal to 2 tangent u over 1 minus tangent square u which basically plug in this again using the diagram we drew the tangent would be opposite over adjacent which is which would be 1 over mm, 1 over 2 1 over negative 2 so b2 tangent of u would be 1 over 2 over 1 minus 1 over 2 
basically if you do this I've done this right here and that would give us 3 over 4 and the end of the day you would answer would be B 4 over 3 okay now this is something you can do X can take on values 4 fifth 3 fifth and 4 third okay so let's go ahead and erase this it looks confusing when I first try to understand this concept because sine, sine, I kept looking at sine, cosine and things like that but when I actually got the whole idea on how to solve it, it seemed pretty fun to solve it. Okay, now there's something called power reduction functions, power reduction formulas, whoops, half angle formulas, product to sum formulas, sum to product formulas okay so if you were just given that if you have sine of let's say a 165 degree what you need to do the first thing is sine of let's say your arbitrary u over 2 is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine u over 2 now you would take on the value uh, 330 over 2 would basically give us plus and minus square root of 1 minus cosine of 330 over 2 right so this would basically give us uh, cosine of 330 would be radical 3 over 2 divided by 2 so, so what we need to do is multiply times conjugate which we talked about this in last section so it will basically equal out to be a square root of 2 radical 3 divided by 2 okay or you can just plug this into your calculator and solve it okay let's say you have 2 minus sine squared x which is equal to 2 cosine squared x over 2 well 2 minus sine squared of x which is 2 cosine which we just found out to be plus or minus the identity for this one is 1 plus cosine x divided by 2 right and we are squaring this so because it's squared over here and on here actually because it's squared over here so it would be 2 minus 1 if you replace this sine squared x would basically give out 1 minus cosine squared x right which would equal out to be 1 plus cosine x this cancels out with the square so 1 plus cosine x and then then basically what you are main so we plug this into here to make it hold the whole equation into zero format okay that would basically turn out as uh, 2 minus 1 plus cosine squared x cosine squared x minus 1 minus cosine of x which is equal to 0 then basically you have cosine squared x minus cosine of x which is equal to 0 then you have cosine of x cosine of x minus 1 simplify that now what you need to do is what makes uh, what can x take on to make the whole cosine of x to be 0 well we said if you, if you remember the cosine squared graph it's basically the x can take on here x can take on the values of um, pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 now cosine of x minus 1 what can it take on was to be honest with you cosine of x minus 1 what what can x take on to be equal to cosine of x ma minus 1 is equal to 0 cosine of x is equal to 1 what can x take on to be equal to 1 well it's basically 0 so x is equal to 0 so you have three values that you just found out by doing this.
pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, or simply 0. So, okay, so that this is it for multiply, uh, multiply angle and product um, uh, trigonometry. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me a lot. There is a Facebook page down below in the description. Uh, down below, there is a URL. Click on that. Give that page a like. Share it with your friends around to like that page as well. Really helps me a lot. Thank you for watching again. Peace out, guys.